Good evening and welcome to today's uh, webinar titled Entrepreneurship, Managing Your Finances During and After COVID-19. The as webinar is being uh, presented to us by uh, Women Focus Canada. Women Focus Canada is a Canadian registered not-for-profit organization, um, WFC for short. Their goal is to share best and uh, promising practices that promote health and wellness for women, girls, families, and communities in Canada and beyond. Women Focus Canada mandates include addressing gender-based violence and trauma, trauma, promoting physical, mental, and psychological health and gender rights, and equality for girls and women, building capacity and empowering individuals to improve their lives and contribute to the socioeconomic development of their communities. This project and the other projects are targeting Afro-Caribbean in GTA to elevate community awareness, disseminate information, provide education about prevention, effects and risk of COVID-19, and provide information on how to access critical services. WFC is uh, partnering with Canadian Red Cross Society for this project. Uh, at this point, I want to recognize our three speakers and the details of the speakers have been provided as part of the uh, materials uh, sent to you after the, your registration to this program. I will be introducing them in um, due course. Like I said earlier on, uh, this series is uh, designed specifically for the Afro-Caribbean community in the GTA and other communities are welcome as well. Now, like I said earlier on, the goal of the webinar for today is to discuss entrepreneurship and learn how to manage your finances during and after the COVID-19 period. So my own name, I'm sorry, I didn't do that initially. My name is Kunli Oladushu. I'll be moderating this program today. So without uh, taking too much of a time, I would like to um, invite our first speaker, uh, Mrs. Patricia Bebea Mawa. She will be speaking about managing and um, uh, pivoting your business during a crisis. Patricia Bebe Amawa has served as president of Planet Africa Group, the executive vice president of Afro Global Television and Silver Trust Media, the largest black owned media organization in Canada. She is also the host of the Planet Africa show on Omni TV. She has directed and produced over 15 television programs, including The Golden Button and Standing Ovation. Patricia is the associate publisher of Excellence, Envision, and Destiny magazines. In 2008, Silver Trust Media introduced the Discover magazine series, which has since released over 20 titles and editions in various countries. Listed in the Who's Who in Black Canada, she is a recipient of the York Regional Police Civic Leadership Award, the Martin Luther King Dreamkeeper Award, and a Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal. The mother of four is the co-founder of the Crossover Mentorship Program, a youth empowerment initiative. Patricia was spotlighted as Woman of the Week in Women's Post and also featured on CNN International in a half-hour special with her husband Moses. In March 2016, the duo launched Afro Global Television, a 24-hour television channel that is on Rogers Cable, Bell 5, East Link, and Tell Us across Canada. In 2018, Patricia and Moses co-authored the 150 Extraordinary Canadians Legacy Book with a foreword by the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. Welcome everyone once again, and I'd like to acknowledge Women Focus for organizing this webinar and also thank everyone who has joined. Um, I'm going to be speaking about managing and pivoting your business during a crisis using the PRESS formula, which is a formula that I actually uh, developed, which has helped 
you know, us in our business over the years and has also helped other, you know, entrepreneurs whom I've coached as well. So I'm really happy to share this with you. I'm writing a book about this. So it means that I have a lot to say, but I'll try to compress everything in the 15 minutes or so that I've been apportioned today. Now, I know that right now we're facing unprecedented times with COVID-19 and this time calls for unprecedented creativity. It calls for a creative renaissance. And someone said, you know, that, you know, the, the, the best way, you know, to become the crisis is to lose your head in a crisis. So this is no time for us to lose our heads or to panic because as soon as we do that, our creativity goes out the door and we actually make the, the wrong decisions. Now, the press formula, um, you know, let's start with the word press. Press, you know, another word for it is push, is plunge, is, you know, moving forward. And it's actually not, you know, giving up on whatever situation you're, you know, facing, is pressing. So the, the press is an acronym for process, resolve, execute, survive, and sail. Now, if you're faced with any situation, thank you, Rowena, for pulling the PowerPoint out. The first thing that you need to do is to process the situation. Ask yourself questions like, you know, how is the situation affecting me? What can I do in the short term and the long term? What aspects of my business, for instance, is relevant at the moment? And, you know, what is working for me and what is not working for me? Now, you also have to do research because sometimes we actually get closed up in our little sort of, you know, box and pockets and do not see what other people are doing. So you have to do your research, ask yourself, what are other people doing at this time? You know, uh, what businesses are booming right now? And the reason you have to ask yourself what businesses are booming at this moment is because if your business is not one of the businesses that, um, you know, are in high demand at this time, you begin to ask yourself questions like, how can I be of service to businesses that are doing well at this time? You know, um, I've been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. Uh, I remember back when I was a kid in Nigeria, I used to, you know, sell a few things to support my family. And, um, you know, I've been doing, you know, uh, registered, a registered business for over 20 years um, and survived a couple of recessions. Now, in the last recession, what happened was that when the recession hit, we had just lost a lot of money from a couple of events that we did and we're kind of like asking ourselves the hard questions. Uh, should we go forward? Should we stop? Should we just go get regular jobs and just quit? And um, what we did was we decided to sit down and process the situation. And you know what we came up with? We asked, we, we asked ourselves the question, which businesses have budgets, or organizations have budgets right now? So who has the money? And that's the question that you need to ask yourself right now. Who has budgets? Who is doing, who needs, who services that I can render that have the money to pay? And what we did at that time was that we actually wrote down the list of the companies and organizations that had budgets. And we actually came up with ideas to serve them. So we went to them and said, okay, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. And one of the things we did at that time is we went to Ottawa and, um, you, you saw in my profile video that we're into publishing. So what we did was we actually went to Ottawa and went from embassy to embassy, um, telling them that, you know, we can produce a magazine for you to promote your country. And I, I remember that some of the countries, um, did not, the, the, the embassies did not just say produce a magazine for us. Some of them actually introduced us to you know their country the, the, the government um so we ended up meet, meeting a couple of heads of states and doing magazines we did discover zambia discover kenya discover zimbabwe discover nigeria so we ended up doing so many magazines at that time for this embassy this was something that we're not doing before that the recession so we from processing the situation we did that and then we said okay governments have money so we come up with ideas for government uh, departments, and we got a very big contract during a recession to do something for a particular government department. And guess what? We actually expanded. We moved to a bigger space, hired about you know a lot of more employees, and came up with more ideas. So when the recession hits like this, we're asking yourself the right questions, like who has the budget? So right now, I know there's some businesses that are doing well that are booming. Some sectors like the grocery. Uh, delivery, sanitation and cleaning, 
in-home entertainment, personal protective equipment, um, even gaming, online, you know, training, fitness, uh, equipment, landscaping, you know, and um, even telecommunications, e-commerce sites, IT. I, I can't mention all of them, but there's some of those businesses that are booming right now um, are actually looking for help in an area that your business may be able to provide. So for instance, our business, we're in the business of TV production, magazine publishing and all that. Now, how are we pivoting? What we decide to do right now is that we, we have our equipment, we have our studio, we have all these things. So we're reaching out to companies to say, look, if you want to produce a training video, we can help you with that. And if you need to you know, reach your clientele through uh, technology, like we can help you run that. So they, we, we're coming up with all these ideas to make sure that we are still relevant. Now, the next thing you need to do is to have a clear vision of the future. Ask yourself, what does the future hold? Where will my place be in that future? And define the purpose, you know, um, and um, the, in relation to current reality. I think sometimes the problem with a lot of businesses is that um, we actually, well, it's a, a normal human instinct. We don't like to change, right? I mean, change is like not a very welcome thing in life generally, because we kind of want to have the, the usual, right? The regular, we want to be kind of comfortable with uh, what we're used to. But if you actually have a clear vision of, the, the reality and ask yourself, where do I fit in? Or, or how can I be of service? Now define the purpose, your purpose in relation to the current reality and see if there are things you can still do um, in the current you know, climate. And if, if there's nothing you can do, then you have to ask yourself the next question, who is relevant right now that I can be of service to? And once you find that, then you will be able to kind of, you know, begin to pivot towards a more rewarding uh, sort of scenario for your business. Now, the next acronym in the word press is RESOLVE. Now, the reason RESOLVE is number two is because most times when you process the situation, if you're going through a crisis, you become scared, right? You become, you know, a little bit uh, intimidated by the magnitude of the problems or the situation that you're in. And I always, you know, make this joke that I always, I, 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 I kind of try to think of myself like a James Bond. You know, James Bond does not get killed in a James Bond movie. He's always resilient. Like no matter what happens, he presses forward. If it means, you know, changing his car to um, a ship, he will, he will, you know, you think he's dead, but he's back. So you have to make up your mind, take responsibility and say, okay, this is happening. There's COVID-19 and things are not the way they used to be, but you know, I'm going to take responsibility and face this. Number two, you have to commit to solutions. Commit yourself to solutions. Tell yourself that you're going to find solutions to the problem that you're in. There's so many businesses that are actually thriving right now who um, are not in sectors that are supposed to thrive, but then they are actually being creative and finding ways to make sure that they're still relevant. Now, the next thing you need to do is to believe in the process. Once you've made up your mind that you're going to do something, make sure that you stick with it and, and do it till the end. I know um, many times people just, you know, give up too soon. That's the problem. And someone said once that um, when you think you've exhausted all the options, remember that you haven't. And I do know, just taking, you know, example uh, or from my own personal experience that uh, many times when you're faced with a situation and you think you've exhausted all the possibilities, um, you haven't. There's still something out there that you can still do. Now, the next thing is to be positive and believe in yourself and to also prepare for the unexpected because these are unprecedented times. And we do know that um, the only thing that can keep us, you know, focused is, is being positive, is believing that we can, you know, sail above this, what's happening, and that we can survive. And if you have that strong, positive mindset and believe in the fact that you have the ability to overcome this, I mean, definitely you will overcome it. Um, right now, I, I must say that a lot of businesses are actually looking in areas that they have never looked at uh, to make sure that they actually stay um, on course and survive this. Now, the next a letter in the press formula is execute. Now, execute is my favorite because this is the stage where you have to do something. Um, 
spending time planning, processing the situation, making up your mind that you're going to take responsibility, stick with the plan, be positive and have hope. All that is great. But if you do not do anything, you will get nothing. So doing nothing gives us zero all the time. So now the first thing you have to do is to rally your team. And when I say team, I, I'm not just talking about your staff members and colleagues. I'm talking about even your clients. Rally your team. And this particular time is a time to actually get in touch with your clients. Even if you don't know what to do, just write them a letter um, and say, hello, how are you doing? Hope you're staying safe in this situation. Um, let me know if there's any way I can be of service. This is what I do. Just remind them, I do ABC. And in, in the wake of COVID, these are the things we put in place to keep us safe and to keep our clients safe. And if you offer services, um, these are the services that we're now offering during COVID. For instance, I never thought I would go to a nail salon during you know, COVID because I was like, somebody's going to be touching my hands. And even if I wash them, you know, if they have COVID, some of it may be left to my nails. So I kind of was scared of going to the nail salon. But guess what? My nail studio sent me a message. Um, they have my phone number. So they sent me a message. And the message was kind of telling me all the things I've put in place to make sure that we're safe. They're going to be, you know, taking everyone's temperature at the door. There's hand washing as soon as you arrive and all that kind of stuff. There's um, disinfecting of the equipment. So as soon as I saw that, I'm like, okay, I can go. So I actually went. So you can imagine how rallying your team, communicating with your clients and, you know, coming up with something that everyone will feel safe or will understand is a very a winning strategy. The next thing is communicate with your clients and stakeholders. And just keep the communication going and commit to excellence. You know, right now, people have the time to check you out. So um, I know before COVID, I was so busy that if I want to buy something, sometimes I just, just go and just buy the thing. I, I don't look for any deals and I will not have time to even look at other sites to see reviews. But now I have time. I'll look for reviews and I'll look for deals. So people are actually looking for value for their money at this time. And they're looking for excellence. They're looking for great products. So make sure that you're focused on excellence, on providing excellent service to your customers at this time. Now, the other thing is to measure results. And if you are kind of um, trying to, um, you know, take steps to address some of the situations or problems that your business may be facing or trying to pivot, uh, make sure that you, you take stock. Because there are certain things that, um, sometimes we get into because we're in a crisis that don't make sense. Like the things that you may just begin to offer us, some services you may just begin to offer that may not really, you know, make any sense to you at this time. You know, like I know that right now a lot of uh, businesses have actually pivoted to doing things that are not their regular stuff. And you need to ask yourself the question, uh, these things that I'm doing right now, are they really, you know, rewarding for my time? Are these things that, you know, will help my business in the long run or things that will bring my business down? So think about that because sometimes you end up investing in things that, you know, in the long run will not be relevant. Now, the next acronym, the next letter in the press formula is survive. Hmm. Survive. Now, I have often said that survival is like holding your breath and hoping to live. It's like holding your breath, but hoping to live. It's like things are tough, you know it, but you're still pressing on, like you're not gonna give up. It's like saying, it is hard, I know it, but yes, I'm gonna stick with this. Now, in surviving, survive, survival is the most important thing, you know, because if you're not here tomorrow, what's the point? Your business will be gone. And I must encourage you, do not give up. You know, a friend of mine, um, always says, do not make a long-term decision where you're under pressure. Uh, this is not the time to just shut down. This is not the time to just say, you know what, it's over. Like when COVID hit and, you know, there was this lockdown for some months, there was no business coming in. I was like, what's going to happen? Maybe we should shut down our studio because we have a big space, which we have to pay, every month, pay for every month. Um, and we spoke to a friend and he said, you know what? That is such, you know, a big decision to make. And, you know, this is not the right time to make it. 
And he gave us reasons and ideas and why we shouldn't and we did not. And I'm glad we didn't because right now we've been able to use the studio to shoot training videos for people who are actually going into um, online training right now. And then, you know, the, the other thing that I, I want to suggest is right now is a time to innovate. Innovate to engage, innovate to engage your clients, your target audience, and the people that you service. Now, there are a lot of ways that a lot of companies are innovating right now. For instance, restaurants. So restaurants are actually right now liaising with farmers, local farmers, to sell groceries. And they're actually delivering groceries to people at home. So in the wake of COVID, the restaurants were closed and um, only takeouts were allowed, but some businesses were not set up for sort of takeout. So um, their revenue was very slim and they liaised with farmers and you know, that kept them going. Now, car companies, for instance, started to produce ventilators. And then we have you know, um, a lot of producers like us, you know, we have equipment, we have space and all that, have actually gone into producing training videos or sort of like online advertising kinds of videos for companies. And that has actually helped to keep, you know, companies like that afloat. Now, the other thing is um, fashion designers, for instance, um, like I have a fashion designer who made this beautiful mask. Um, it's made with an African fabric and recently I actually helped to set up on Zoom because I'm like, you have, I'm sorry, on um, Amazon. My, so she set up her store on Amazon and now people are able to order this from, you know, not all over North America and she's doing really well. So think of what you can do to either, you know, service the COVID-19 sort of um, financial reality or what can you do to service those who are booming, who, those whose businesses are booming at the moment? So those are things you need to kind of um, look out for. Now, the other thing is streamline your operations, streamline your operations. So um, for instance, our business, we used to spend a lot of money on things like wardrobe and you know, set design and all that kind of stuff. But at this time, um, you know, you don't have to spend so much money on that because most of what we do is virtual and we've not had the events going on. So you have to ask yourself in my business, what are the things that matter right now? And what are some of the things that I don't have to worry about right now? And I tell you, if you do not think about it, you may just be spending money on things that are not relevant. So keeping your, your somebody said the one way to be rich is to either keep your, is to keep your, keep your money or make more money. So you can either keep the money that you have or make more money to have money. So uh, what you want to do right now is to make sure that you're keeping the money that you don't have to spend um, so that your finances are actually, you know, in place. Your cash flow is great. Now, the next um, uh, letter in the acronym is SALE. Is SALE. Now, after you've survived, after you've survived what this crisis is putting all of us through, you, you now want to thrive. And you know, surviving is great, but I think what happens in life is that sometimes we get stuck in the survival mode, but you have to know when you actually have to move to another stage. Uh, for instance, when I came to Canada, I you know, was an overnight stock at Walmart. That was my survival job. But then I knew that there will come a time when I have to leave that job because I was a student at the time. And when the time came, I told myself that, you know what? It's now time to change course. Uh, that was my survival job. Now I have to sail. So you have to know at what point you have to move to a point where you're now thriving. And you have to learn new things. In this. So in sailing, you have to learn, relearn, and unlearn. So you have to kind of think about what are the new things that I can um, actually acquire this time, new knowledge and new information that can help me to be you know, creative and to be able to come up with ideas that can help my clients to stay with me. Then you have to relearn. Some of the things that you knew before COVID are not relevant at this time, but they'll be relevant again. So you have to relearn and then unlearn. You know, somebody said that the best way to stay in a crisis is to remain yourself. <laughs> I, and I was like, what does that mean? When I thought about it deeply, what this person is simply saying is that if you refuse to change, then you're in a crisis. So we have to all, you know, at this time, 
be open to new ideas, be open to new possibilities, be open to try new things, be open to learning new things, to relearning things that we knew before in a new way and unlearning some of the things that we knew before so that we don't become stuck, okay? Then the next thing is do not neglect your crew and community. Stay in touch. You know, networking is so important if you want to be, you know, successful in anything that you do, especially in business. So you have to actually, you know, network with people in your industry, find out what they're doing, network with members of the community, your clients. So just keep your community around you and make sure that you're constantly uh, bouncing off ideas and learning new things from them. Now, the next thing is to enjoy the journey. You know, sometimes as entrepreneurs, we work so hard and we forget to actually enjoy the journey. So we have to learn to enjoy the journey of, you know, being relevant. So what is, what is business? Business is actually offering a service, being useful to somebody. It's providing a solution to a problem. And I think that's really wonderful. I must say that um, anyone who is an entrepreneur is someone that needs to be lauded because it's, it's not an easy thing to... Uh, like we've been doing our business full time now for about um, 18 years. So it's for 18 years, I've not worked anywhere else. I've not done a part time job. Neither has my husband will be running the business full time. And when things were tough, we didn't say we're going to quit. We kind of kept going. And, and I, I think, you know, every entrepreneur really needs an applause because I think with the kind of world that we're in with so many you know, changes and uh, disruptions and we, we just always have to reinvent ourselves and innovate to make sure that we're still here. Now the next thing is do not focus on obstacles but possibilities. There are a lot of obstacles right now. Yeah we can't do all the things that we used to do but guess what there's so many other things that we never used to do that we can do at this moment. So let's seek for the things that can that are possible and not focus on the things that are impossible or that are obstacles at this moment. And the next thing is never stop dreaming. Never stop dreaming. Do not get to a point where you think, yeah, I've made it and, and this is it. No, like we started, we had, um, as um, we used to do wedding videos. And then at some point then we started to do television, you know, production. And now we doing magazines. And currently we just went into film production, which is I, something I really love. I didn't even know how much I, I would love it, but it's, it's just something I love so much now. And I'm actually right now making about three movies at the same time. And uh, our companies are kind of now going into, you know, film production and all kinds of things like that. So keep growing and keep dreaming. Never stop dreaming. I mean, the moment you stop dreaming is the moment you actually start to die. And uh, finally, never give up. I do know, I do understand that um, for some businesses, it's really tough right now. Um, I know some businesses are able to easily, you know, bounce back or offer services to other people, but you may say, Patricia, you don't know the kind of business that I do. It's just hard for me to, you know, bounce back or do anything right now. Remember what I said at the beginning, when you think you've exhausted all options, remember that you haven't. So think again, you know, network with people, ask questions, do research and see what people in other parts of the world are doing. You'd be surprised that you'd be inspired by someone who is in Australia. Um, I, I've read, you know, stories of people all over the world and how they're kind of um, being innovative and making sure that they're still standing. Um, and I want you to remember that this will not last forever. It's going to end. Um, I know we as humans, we always find a way to survive. We've survived so many things, the Great Recession, um, the all kinds of flus. And this is going to pass someday. And at the end of the day, you learn so many lessons that you much, you'll be much better if you actually take a look at the steps that I shared and, and say to yourself, I'm going to go through this. Like James Bond, at the end of the day, you're just going to walk away with not a single scar, um, but only, you know, lessons. Even the scars that you're going to sort of um, endure or, or get from the challenges, see them as not just scars, but learning experiences. So thank you very much for such an excellent presentation. I can relate with it. Uh, when you attend webinars such as these, when you hear from practitioners, they will give you not uh, the theory, but the practice of it. Thank you very much. I want us to quickly move to the uh, next speaker. Uh, the, our next speaker is uh, Kofi Frempong. 
Uh, Kofi is a Ghanaian-born, Toronto-based visual artist, community health worker, and founder of Freedom Fridays, a movement that is rooted in the belief that community can build community. Kofi has a passion for creating safe spaces, which are conducive to love, learning, laughter, and endless possibilities. He is well known for his use of vibrant warm colors and free brush strokes in depicting narratives of black love and beauty. Kofi believes that art is a conduit of love and creating art is a form of, ex of expression and healing. Love the world with all your art is one of his guiding uh, principles. Uh, Kofi is a very successful artist who has built a very successful uh, art career and he has shown his um, works in many galleries both in Canada and outside Canada. So it gives me a great pleasure to invite uh, Kofi to um, talk to us on the topic today. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Um, before anything I have to say that I'm really honored to be on the panel with two amazing um, and successful Black women. Um, it certainly isn't uh, anything that is new to me, but it's always, always, always a pleasure to be in the presence and to share space with uh, amazing Black women. Um, I'm just going to be covering two areas. One, the importance of building your community for your brand. And two, um, what uh, different income streams actually look like. I believe that the two really feed into each other. Um, so yeah, we're going to get into it. Can we pull up the first slide, please? Uh, yes. So um, for any brand, any business, uh, any celebrity, what really uh, drives uh, your success is your ability to create a community. Um, and this is a, a number of people who support your business in different ways. It could be through purchasing, it could be through promoting your work, it could be through um, connecting you with opportunities, the list goes on. Um, if you're able to get um, a large number of supporters, you'll find that success in your business will come from all different angles. Um, so when building your community, uh, there's a few things that you should definitely consider. Um, the first is, to share and make clear what your philosophy is. Um, a lot of times people are more invested once they buy into a philosophy. So for mine, my philosophy is rooted around self-care, um, connecting with people and just creating safe spaces. Um, so a lot of the people that support my brand also understand that about about me and um, the work that I produce. The second is um, providing value. Um, for anything that you provide a community, you need to provide value. Uh, so things to consider is, are you providing education? Are you providing a space where people feel welcomed? Um, are you providing products that people can use? And are relevant to their lives. Um, what are people coming to your platform for? Why are people patronizing your business? Um, and is it of any real value to them? So that's really important when building your community is to consider the spaces that you're creating and how it benefits people. Um, on the most simplest of levels, <laughs> people go to places where they feel seen, they feel heard, they feel taken care of. Um, and they get their needs met. So if you can create such an environment that, that produces those things for people, you'll find that your community will slowly grow and grow and grow. Uh, the third thing to consider is um, allowing space for people to be active participants. Um, and this is just another way of saying engage people. So asking for their input, um, engaging them in competitions, connecting them to opportunities where they can either express themselves or, or be seen. Um, this is also important because again, in any community, um, 
Com communities thrive when people feel seen, heard, and are actively participating, um, where they're sharing their skills, their knowledge, um, or even their ideas. The, the fourth uh, thing to consider is asking for help. I know that a lot of entrepreneurs really struggle with this um, because, you know, they just don't want to impose on anybody or um, for whatever reason, there's a lot of shyness or guilt around this. I would employ you to change your perspective around asking for help. One of the things that's uh, grossly underestimated when it comes to asking for help is people assume that it's all for you. Once you have a community of people that are invested in your business, in your philosophy, they're engaged, um, it's actually a privilege for them to be able to support you. Um, because they're not only supporting you, but they're supporting the space that you built. Um, and as you know, like this in this day and age, finding safe spaces where you feel heard, um, valued, and taken care of is is um, a very difficult thing. So once people realize that they've discovered a space like this, they'll do things to make sure that you know this space survives. Um, so what does asking for help look like? It could mean that you're asking people to promote your work. It could mean that you're asking for donations for a fundraiser. Um, or, um, and I guess, you know, the root of all business is to purchase your, your, your goods and services. Um, but just understand that asking for help um, also feeds into community building. You're engaging people. You're allowing them to participate in, in um, the philosophy of your whole brand. The 80-20 rule, which we can go into a little bit later in the Q&A, is basically 80% of your content, your marketing that you put out there, um, should be based on producing value. Um, and then this 20% is the ask. Um, like I just mentioned, things that you would like your your supporters, your community members to do for you. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So as we wait for the next slide, um, once you're able to engage your, your community, um, I just wanna show you, you know, possible ways in which this can pay off. Um, in regards to creating an income stream. Um, so we're gonna go into like some specifics on what I've been able to do with my business as an artist. Um, I started off by selling original acrylic paintings. Um, that was the only thing that I was doing initially when I started. As things went on, people started to say, hey, um, I really wanna support your business, but your prices are a little bit too high for me, my budget right now. Um, is there anything that's possible? Um, they also said, hey, <laughs> I really like that piece that you just sold. Do you have any copies of it? So from there, um, I started to produce prints and prints made it more accessible to people um, for a couple of reasons. One, there was more uh, work to share and two, it was at a, an affordable rate. Um, I then ventured onto live painting um, where I would paint at events and get paid for it. Uh, from there, um, recently, I was able to be in a position where I was licensing my artwork out. Uh, so for instance, CBC Arts um, approached me about using my artwork for a logo for their monthly artist feature. Um, currently, I'm in negotiations with Netflix for a movie that they're producing and they would like to feature my art. So there are some costs associated to that um, that would produce an income for myself. Um, teaching slash facilitating, I teach. <laughs> I facilitate workshops and that's another source of income. Uh, when I feel like it, uh, I do commissions. And so commissions are custom pieces of artwork that I produce for people, one of a kind. Um, Another thing that I've jumped into is uh, affiliate accounts. 
Um, basically what that is, is there's a bunch of companies out there that um, allow you to join their affiliate program. And what that is, is that if you provide a link for somebody to purchase an item, you might get anywhere from five to 10% um, of a kickback for making that referral. What I was able to do is, if you can create a course that, create, that requires materials, you now can send um, the material links to your students so that they can directly purchase the, the materials that are needed. Um, so while purchasing those, from every sale, you're getting five to 10% commission on those purchases. Um, Amazon is one of the biggest platforms to do this. Um, and all it requires really is an email. <laughs> And um, it's, yeah, it's really simple. So I encourage people to really look into that. Um, I also do paint nights um, where, you know, right now that's a very popular thing um, where, you know, you go on dates and uh, you have a lead artist and people paint under the guidance of the lead artist. Mine comes with a little bit of a twist, um, an amazing event planner, and an amazing DJ, and together we we provide a different twist to um, paint nights. Uh, I also get paid to do exhibiting. I exhibit my artwork at different events. Um, so I've done stuff with TD Bank, um, uh, Bank of Montreal, um, and then finally I get paid for consulting. Um, a lot of the things that I've learned throughout my art career. Um, both as an artist and as somebody who markets a lot of their work on social media, I've been able to um, transfer those skills to make money. Um, in this age where information is so accessible, uh, I guess you would guess that, you know, why would somebody ask for an, a consultant when they can easily look for the information themselves? The truth is, um, a lot of people one, don't have the time. Um, two, people want things to be packaged in a way that is digestible, easily digestible. Um, so if you find that you are very knowledgeable in something that has to do with your um, specific products or services, then that is an opportunity to make money from it. Um, yeah, and then finally, just be creative because although there might be a limited amount of categories um, for creating income streams, the amount of income streams that uh, one person can generate is virtually limitless. <laughs> you can literally have a hundred different income streams. Um, and then the last thing I'll say about that is, is that um, the goal should be always to create time and profit from these in income streams. So it would be in your best interest to um, make as many things um, as automated as possible so that it frees up your time and you're not physically um, doing work to um, take away the time that you could spend on creating new income streams, uh, building your, your business, or simply enjoying time with the family. Um, that is it. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Kofi, for such a, uh, a very good presentation. Thank I enjoyed you. it. Thank you very much. And it gives me a uh, great pleasure to um, introduce our last uh, speaker for the night, for tonight, uh, Reni Odetoyimbo. And uh, Reni is a marketing consultant by day and an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, educator, and lover of all things finance by night. Uh, Reni has uh, uh, a lot of experience, a lot of work she's done in terms of turning ideas into business and also um, in the area of uh, uh, working with people on wealth management. Uh, I was just reading her bio, she bought her first home at 23. That's quite impressive. So, um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome Reni or the team to provide our presentation. Reni, over to you. So good evening, everyone. I'm coming to you live from Rwanda, actually. I'm based in Rwanda right now. So hi, everyone. It's 1 a.m. right now. <laughs> um, 
Thank you for joining this call today and thank you to Women Focus Canada for having me. It really is a privilege to be able to speak to each and every one of you today. I know that there's a lot going on in the world, in Nigeria and just living through a pandemic that we all are, but I thank you and I'm so grateful that you're all um, de deciding to spend your night with us tonight. So to introduce myself, as Kunle said, I am Reni Auditoyembo. I am a marketing and branding specialist, and I currently work at the Bank of Montreal in their wealth management department. That's my day job, but by night, I am an entrepreneur. So I run a YouTube channel where I educate people in the Black community, especially, on financial literacy and career development. And then I also have, a, I am a co-founder of a creative agency called Season 3, where we do photography and videography for businesses and brands. So as you can see, I juggle quite a few things and thankfully all of these three things provide me additional sources of income, which is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about today. So today I'll speak to you on the various streams of income and what they actually are, the importance of diversifying your streams of income and then how you can acquire more. I think that especially in the Afro-Caribbean community, we believe that like there's a common misconception that just be, that people who are rich are rich because either they have a really high paying job or because they have uh, parents who are rich. I think that's a common misconception that we have. However, this really, while it may be true in some cases, oftentimes this is really the reason that they stay rich. A lot of times it's because they have multiple streams of income and they're able to diversify their income. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about. I know there's a lot of get rich quick schemes that are out there and they claim to get you rich instantly, but there are tried and tested ways that you can actually stay, get, acquire wealth and stay wealthy. So that's what I will be speaking about today. And make sure you talk in the chat, introduce yourself, let's be interactive. So my first point is that having only one source of income is too close to having none. So as we can see during COVID-19, we can see that COVID really took so many jobs and opportunities away from people and it actually decimated entire industries. So you can see how easily, easy it is to go from having one in source of income to having one overnight. So right now I'd like you to comment in the chat if you feel comfortable. Of course, you do not have to write if you don't feel comfortable, but just, just so we can learn from each other and see where everyone is, how many current how many streams of income do you currently have? If you could just leave that in the chat, that would be helpful. Personally, I have five streams of income or five categories of income and then even more within each category. And I was able to purchase my first house at the age of 23, as Kunle said. So, and the real value of this is that it allows me to make financial decisions and it makes me, it allows me to have financial freedom. So whether you're looking to move from an employee to an entrepreneur, or you're looking to balance both, just like I do, explaining these following tips should be helpful. So the first source of income that most people have is earned income. Earned income is the income that you get from your job or employment or self-employment. So for example, for me, I work at the Bank of Montreal, as I said, and that is one form of, self, of earned income for me. Um, the problem with the, well, they're not the problem, but the thing about this source of income is that you have to exchange your time for this income. So I have to go and work 37 and a half hours a week to, in order to get a salary. Obviously, if I'm not able to work 37 and a half hours a week anymore, I have no more salary. So, or if someone decides to fire me, God forbid, or if I get sick, God forbid, those are all ways that you, I suddenly lose that income. So that's the reason we don't want to rely just on this one source of income. We want to actually diversify it. So um, here are some ways you can diversify your income. This, another way would be profit income. So profit income is when you make money based on purchasing something and then reselling it at a, a higher price. So this is a, a lot, what a lot of business owners do. I know this one may require a lot of initial investments, but a lot of people do this with things as simple as, I know that I sometimes sell my clothes on the websites like Depop or um, other websites like that, where you can just resell your clothes after you've worn them. Because a lot of times people buy clothes and wear them for one or two occasions. You don't have to do that or you don't have to just throw the clothes away, you can actually sell them and make a profit. So that's an, an option. Or I used to have the source of income where I would actually um, purchase things at Costco and then resell them on Amazon. So there are lots of ways for you to diversify your income. 
The next way that I will mention is capital gains. So if you watch my YouTube channel, shameless plug, it's Exo Rennie if you want to watch. I talk about investing all the time and the value of investing. I think capital gains is where a lot of us should be focusing our time and making our money really work for us. So this is where the money is at in my opinion. This is when you have appreciation on an asset that you already own. So for example, if I buy a stock, which is could be even $50. So if I buy or if I buy stock of Apple, which is around $150 right now, if once Apple releases a new iPhone, that stock is going to soar. So once it soars, that $150 can go to $200, for example. That is $50 that you have gained by doing nothing but purchasing that initial stock. So I think this is something that a lot of people are scared to do because they feel as though, oh, it's so risky to put my money into something and then I don't know if it will, if it will, um, if my money will increase. But I have been investing since I was 18 years old and trust me, this is how I bought, I was able to buy my house simply through investing and using my earned income and making my money work for, for me. So I think this is something that we should all look into, especially if you are an entrepreneur, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So make sure that you check out how to invest and don't just jump into it. Make sure you um, educate yourself on it before because there are obviously risks associated with investing. The next thing, and this is, this is dividend income. Dividend income is one of the sweetest forms of income in my opinion. And this is money that you get as a return on the shares that you bought in a company. So if I re refer back to Apple again, if I have a share of Apple that has now got to $200 from that $150. So I had the capital gains of $50, which is amazing. But Apple is a company that actually pays you a dividend and every quarter they'll pay you money and they'll pay you cash for just owning their stock. So there are lots of shares in Canada and in the States that do this. And you can obviously research which stocks are dividend stocks, but this is just great form of passive income that doesn't require you to do anything else in order to get more money. So I think this is something everyone else should look, everyone should look into, especially if you're just getting into stocks, you can go for the safe ones, which will pay you a dividend every single quarter. The next thing that I will mention, and a lot of people do have this form of income, it is interest income. So interest income is just when you lend your money to someone else and you charge them interest as a form of payment for you giving them your, your money. So this is very, on a small scale, this is when you put your money in a bank account. The bank actually pays you a div, uh, the bank actually pays you interest on the money that you've given them. This can be very small, so but we do all need savings accounts. So instead of putting your money under your mattress, for example, or just putting your money somewhere where it's not growing, put it in somewhere that's actually going to pay you to have it there. Um, you can look into a high interest savings account because this is the way for you to generate more money than a general savings account or your checking account, which really has very minute um, interest rates. Uh, if you have a lot of income, then this is, you can also lend money to other people and then they will pay you uh, base, uh, an interest rate based on what you decide with them. This is risky, so make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into before you actually decide to do that. The next one would be rental income. So, of course, this is something that does require a bit of capital upfront, but this is the money that you get from renting out an asset that you already own. So this honestly, for me personally, this is my house. So for my house, I rent my house out and then the family is, that lives there is able to pay me rent every month and that pays helps you pay down the mortgage. So this is the form of income. However, I know that not everyone can buy a house and it's very expensive. So to start off, one of my friends actually purchased a bouncy castle on eBay and he, he purchased it for a thousand dollars and now he goes to different houses every weekend. So throughout summer, he was booked every single weekend. Um, they would pay him $250 per day and he was able to rent out that bouncy castle and people, the children would just bounce on it during the weekend. This is a great and practical way for you to get into the rent rental income space. And all you have to do is put whatever asset you have and give it to people to use and then take it right back. It's a great way that it just keep, it keeps on giving. Like you only have to purchase it once and then you just let it continue to generate income for you. So I think this is a great way for people to get into the rental income game. And last but not least, royalty income. So royalty income is something that, um, this is where you get, 
people are able to use your products, your ideas, or your processes, and it allows them, it allows you to make revenue. So I do not have this form of income. Uh, this is, this can happen when you're in the music industry or if you are a franchisee, but this is another great way to generate more income. For example, a and um, every, so a and is, each a and you see is owned by small business owners, but a and W as a company as a whole is owned by head office. So each person pays them a royalty fee every month in order to continue to use their brand name. So this is a great form of income. Personally, I would love to get this form of income where someone is using my name and then they're paying me to, to, uh, brand, to use my brand, but I'll get there one day and I hope all of you will too. So once again, I, I want to emphasize that having one source of income really is too close to having none. And we want to make sure we diversify our sources of income. So how many do you aspire to have in the future? That's the question I leave you with. Thank you so much for listening to me. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat box and we'll get to them right away. And you can connect with me on Instagram or YouTube at XO Rennie. Thank you very much, Rennie, for that uh... Powerful presentation. Thank you very much.